Hi, friends. I hope everybody is well. I hope you guys are going to enjoy your New Year's Eve. And I thought, what better way to end a year than to have a video on my favorite art supplies. So, one of them, as you can see here, I'm excited to show you. It has been a true time and true friend of mine, I'll tell you that. But stay tuned in the video to see my favorites. I hope you guys can sit back and enjoy. Okay, the first thing I want to begin by showing you of my favorites is I love my Winsor & Newton paint. And this is my Maiden Ceramic Palette. Um, I love it so much. It gives me a lot of mixing space. I can keep my warms, warms and my cools separate. I kind of do my cools and my neutrals over here. Um, and then my reds and yellows, like the warm colors over here. But I do, I know purple is considered a cool color. However, I do a lot of times mix it with the reds, the yellows, oranges, etc. So there is that. Now, everything I am doing today is not in order. Um, I just kind of have the stuff around me, so because it's a lot. The second thing I'm going to show you, I love this micro portable painter. It works really well. I like that it's a limited palette. It's very small. And I just do basically a small mix and set here with um, a Danielle Smith paint, which is brings me to my second favorite. So far for paints, I have a lot. When you get into um, the artist grade, I feel they're all quite well quite good. I can't really pick between the Da Vinci or the Windsor & Newton, Danielle Smith, M. Graham. I've tried a lot of them and I love it all. They all are different. However, that brings me to student grade, which is a different vehicle. So for student grade paint, I have found for my favorites for 2023 has there's been two that I really love. And the first being, I can't help it, is the paint I started with is my Windsor & Newton Cotman. I originally, I have a pan set that is huge. I got it when I began with coloring and I started using it in my coloring, adult coloring books. And then I went to tubes and this is another favorite of mine. These little plastic palettes, there's this size and then there's, you know, the bigger ones. They have like the 33 wells. They're great for beginners. They're very cheap. Um, you can scruff it down. There, I have a video on it. Um, or there's, you know, you can use a magic eraser you can use a scrubbing pa uh, pad but i have a video on it and if i remember i will put it down in the description below but i love the windsor and newton copman i find it's a very affordable very good student gray paint in my opinion the uh, next set of paint that i would like to talk about that is student great is the mei ling mei ling um, student grade is made by Paul Rubin and I have not tried the actual Paul Rubin paint which I love so Paul Rubin if you're listening I would love 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 to try your actual Paul Rubin artist grade paint but in the meantime um, I got this Mei Lang and I love it I have the older version which the older version which some people may have i bought this i think right before they switched to the actual pans but they're in this plastic thing and it's not bad you can't like once you use it these suckers are not coming out 
But if you did this when you first got it, the the little cakes would have fell out. But you have a mix-in area here. Excuse the dog hair. I have two dogs and it's inevitable. But I don't ever use this side. I use this side. As you can see, though, it does stain. Hopefully, I have everything in view. If I don't, I apologize. I am suffering with a migraine today. And it has not been fun. So, I want to go to the next item. So, I do a lot of plain air and a lot of urban sketching. And so, I got this Rosa Gallery urban sketching palette and i absolutely love it the colors are perfect i get a um a lot of pan um not pan well you get your whole pan so you get a lot of paint for your money it was 20 something dollars maybe 25 dollars perhaps but i got it on amazon and I love it. I love that you have the three sections to mix in. You have both sides and it works great. The um these are some of the mixes I got. I love that purple mix. But very good point um for some urban sketching. Okay, so the next thing is now I have a newer one, but I have not seemed to gotta get away from this one. In the videos, I used the other ones, but I didn't want to dig it out. But anyway, is a color wheel. A color wheel, I find, is very important. You have your grayscale, your hues, which you can compare to. You have your colors for mixing. And here probably in the next few weeks we may do start doing some color mixing videos to go along with some of the whimsical folk art i've been doing so moving on to the next item i'm trying to go over stuff relatively quickly another tool type thing i have been utilizing is these color cubes by sarah renee clark these are have been a favorite if you ever get stuck i have both of them and there's a reference where you can also use it with the color catalog which i have volume two i believe volume one or volume two i have one of the volumes and you can use it in coordinates with these <coughs> excuse me but you take it and you have your colors and you can color match or sometimes what I like to do to practice painting I like to maybe take the design and try to paint it using the colors and color match it if you need an idea um, I might eventually do a sketchbook series where we just randomly pick one and we sketch it in our sketchbook and we use those colors for some color matching practices so that brings me to the next item. While we're talking about colors and the color wheel, I love this Quiller's Traveler palette. Try to put it this way. It is huge, though. Like, I cannot tell you how big this is. I cannot remember the measurements, but there is a video down below once again that I talk all about it. Anyway, you have the top that you can use for a mixing area, but I do not. I think this is plenty. You have a spot for your brushes and then your colors. And I have Danielle Smith watercolor in here. And I don't use it a lot in my videos because it does take up so much space. And I want you guys to see my color mixes. But if you're working in your studio at home, I would strongly suggest this or the Meenan palette. You honestly cannot go wrong with those. So, now we're moving on to paper. Well, let's scratch that. I got two more palettes I wanted to show. Okay. This Magello palette 
is another one that I like. You can use it in studio or for plain air. And the great thing about it is it stills it pretty good. You have plenty of mixing space. In mine, I can, under the clear, I keep my color code and you can still color mix. And I would, if I do, I normally try to keep it in this area so I can still have my color code. And then my colors. Hopefully, I need to check to make sure I'm in view, which I am. Awesome. So, I love this. And in this one, I have my Winsor & Newton once again. I started with Winsor & Newton. So, a lot of my paint, because I went from Winsor & Newton Copman to Winsor & Newton Professional. So, and then what I did, a lot of times, I would practice with like Winsor & Newton Copman. And then use my nicer paintings for the professional to try to save some money on paint. Um, which I will be doing a haul video soon. And with a disclaimer, everything I have bought, I have bought with my own money or has been gifts from my family. And with that being said... The reason why is I was a cigarette smoker and I would, re I quit smoking cigarettes. And when I did, instead of buying a pack of cigarettes, I would buy me a tube of paint. Not the best way to quit smoking, but hey, it worked for me. So the other palette I really enjoy for plain air is my portable painter palette. I love it. I can use it when I kayak, which I kayak a lot. I can use it when I am urban sketching or at home, wherever. You put it over your leg, you can set it on a table. I have gotten the extra things because I never used the brush that came in here and put the things so you can put the extra colors and I love it. And this was... I put Daniel um, Smith watercolor in here, and it was the first time of me using the actual um, Daniel Smith watercolor, which I really do love. I don't find it a point to really recommend a professional paint because I find they are all work pretty much really well. The only ones I am really not sure about is the Mamari. And the Mamari Blue. And the reason why is I'm not so sure if it's life fast. And my paintings that I do, I sell my original artwork. And with that being said, I don't want to sell something if it's going to be too life fast. Anyway, moving on. I love these Turner Acrylic Gouache. I would, if you want something fun to play around with, these work wonderfully. Um, I really had a lot of fun with playing with these in my sketchbook. And for the acrylic gouache, like, to me, acrylic is sometimes hard to work with because of the glare, but with the matte... And here soon, I am going to, I finished the sketchbook, so expect a sketchbook tour coming soon. But as you can see, I use it for the tomato and for the mushroom. And I just really liked how my ladybug and the um, mushroom here, and I just really loved how it turned out. So I guess I can leave this out and bring it to the next point. Um, sorry guys, I'm talking so fast. I'm just not trying to have this video run like a mile long. I'm doing it on my cell phone and due to memory issues, I don't like doing stuff that's lasting forever. Anyway, I would, um, one of the sketchbooks I really love using and I get them on Amazon, but I also have found it and here is a money saving tip. I actually got this every day at your sketchbook on clearance for like five bucks. I went to a local art supply. Uh, it was when the college kids started. And when I went in and it just so happened with the college kids starting that they had an overstock. 
So check with your local art stores because sometimes they'll have clearance and you can find these hidden jewels. And I bought a whole bunch of the Etcher Everyday Sketchbooks in different sizes and different kinds. They're all cold press um, though, however. So um, this is an all-time favorite. I would definitely suggest it. However, the one downside I did not like about it is how dirty this, um, the covers get because I do do a lot of plain air and being out in the environment, um, it gets really dirty. And the color, or if they're going to have the fabric, I wish they would almost do a black option because it wouldn't show the dirt as well, even if you go and paint it up. Okay, moving on, and we are getting down closer. I'm going to go over some of, you see, here's another Etcher sketchbook. This is one I am previously working on, and it's in portrait style, which is a newer for me. So these are what, this is what I'm going to be doing for some urban sketching and some whimsical type folk art which everybody has been loving. Thank you, by the way, for those who are newly subscribed to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. So very kind of you and the very kind comments from my subscribers that have been following me from the beginning. I want to have a special thank you for you. I really appreciate it. But moving on, um... One of my favorite affordable papers, and actually, I got this off of Timu. I've only ordered once off of Timu. I just wanted to give it a go. Um, it will be in my art haul that I will be having soon. I think the next video I'm going to do is a art haul video because I am done buying art supplies. I have enough. So, I am on... Officially starting January 1st, I am officially on a no-buy exception of I do need a palette for the one paint set. So, exception of that, it'll be, or if I need something for like a commission, that'll be something a little exception of the rule. But anyway, back to this. Um, Academy paper, and I paid $2 for this 7x4.9, so you might as well say 7x5, um, Academy watercolor, sorry if there's a glare, um, can't help it, because it's still wrapped, and I did not want to unwrap it, sorry for the noise, um, didn't want to unwrap it with it not being used yet, so... When I first started, I got this um, Paul Rubin sketchbook, and let me tell you, I love it. The paper is amazing, and it's extremely affordable. See, I had wrote down my colors, you know, and this is one you have to excuse us. This is when I... First, first began. I mean, like, first began. So, but the the paper quality, I loved it. It was my first time of really using the 100% cotton. And let me tell you, if you guys are looking for a really good, affordable um, sketchbook, the Paul Rubin, honestly, is a way to go on that as well, besides the Sketcher Everyday Sketchbooks. So, I started practicing flowers, and I kind of like Lindsay, the frugal crafter, and her sketchbook floozies. I kind of feel like her. I have so many sketchbooks, but it's hard for me to go to use my good, expensive arches or Fabriano paper if I'm just practicing. So, for me to justify the expense, I tend to use sketchbooks. So, um, I was watching Deb Walker. Um, a lot of you guys are familiar with you, her. Those who haven't, um, she does amazing florals for beginners, and she's a wonderful YouTuber. You should check her out on her channel. But um, if I remember, I'll leave her link in everything, description, 
below, but she suggests this Artisto watercolor paper, and she said it's not 100% cotton paper, but it works really well. And I am finding it works beautifully for my loose watercolor florals that I am practicing. Here is one. If anybody want to see any florals, just let me know um, down below in the comments. And I will be more than happy to accommodate. I have been practicing them and really enjoying them. This is what I have done thus far. I got a couple books I have been using for references and trying to practice flowers because in Ohio during the spring and summer, we can paint buildings, barns, landscapes, and we have lots and lots of flowers. So I love painting flowers. Now, moving on to, once again, another palette. Sorry guys, a lot of palettes. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with all our toolkit, but I absolutely love our toolkit. It is really hard for me a lot of times to decide between the portable painter or the art toolkit, but I think I lean more towards the art toolkit because it works with my James Gurney style easel and I can put it in my art toolkit bag, which is the next item. I might as well show these together. Sorry about the banging. Um, so I have my art toolkit. I have the mini here for the watercolor. And with these, you can switch out to the different sizes. And I finally got this perfected to the way I wanted for a smaller model. I put in an extra mix in space. It's just enough colors for what I use it for. I could put it in this pocket. And then I have one specifically for my Danielle Smith gouache. However, I do need to get a hold of Art Toolkit because this is not laying flat. And if you're trying to do it, I'm glad this is gouache and not watercolor um, because of the mixes. <coughs> Excuse me once again. <clears throat> I need a get it and drink. I think I'm battling a cold. Okay. So when you have it up here, it's fine and you don't have a lot of watery mixes, but so I am trying to use up this gouache so then I can possibly put these pans in a different one and um, I'm going to see if the company can Give me a suggestion if they can fix it or if maybe they'll replace it. But it's just the other ones were great. They lay flat. Um, this is their Art Toolkit Folio. I absolutely love it. I was able to customize it the way I wanted it. Um, because there's colors that I use more, other colors I don't use so much of. And, and both of these, this is Danielle Smith gouache this is danielle smith watercolor so between the two but i'm finding it works great and then i have the um the key you know i keep the the palette colors color chart i will call it as such and then see both of these fit right in here I normally don't keep the large one in here. I use that for a separate actual kit. But these two and then my James Gurney easel. But I keep everything in here. Um, another favorite is this Raphael Soft Aqua set for it's their travel brush set. I absolutely love it for um, my plain air and urban sketching. It fits in here great. I have my little nice setup. But this is one of my, these are all my favorite things so far for 
the year 2023 and then next year around this time I'll do it because I want to make it a yearly um, series for plain air I love having the Wago butt cushion um, now another favorite and it's always hard between what I'm doing but if I'm hiking I will take this over the art toolkit bag because it has the straps I have my butt cushion and then this is where I use the art folio palette because I could put it in here and have all my stuff. So this Etcher fill case is an all time favorite. Absolutely love it. And then this is kind of hard. So you can actually work on the service and not have to worry about an easel or you can bring a book. And then the last thing I wanted to show you guys is my Esther Slate Mini. This thing has been used and used time and time and true. You can put it on a tripod or you can carry it. You have your pocket here. You have your pocket here and it fits so much stuff. By the way, this is my favorite water container. I have several different ones. Um, this is one of those fiber Castell pop-up ones and I even put it a wire on it so it can hang. But honestly, I, I use it at home. Um, I prefer this one cause I can clip it right to my James, uh, James Gurney easel. Uh, and it's super light. They have metal ones, but I prefer the plastic and it works out fabulous squirt bottle. But you can fit so much stuff in here. I find when I go with my um, plain air group, I take my Etcher Slate Mini. And then on the inside, you have a bag and all that, but I, a netting, and I took the netting out. And some of the things I have in the pocket, but I have my travel brushes here, my ruler, pencil. So basically all I have to do is throw a watercolor palette in here and some paper and everything else is in here and I am ready to go. And I love that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed everything and everything. Um, these are just some suggestions. Oh, Oh, and before I forgot, brushes. <laughs> First of all, if you need a good pencil, I would recommend, I have the two of the black wing. Oh, and I would strongly recommend these and I will tell you why. One, you can replace the erasers and these eraser guys work really well. Minus if you don't get it in there right, make sure you do so it's clipped and it stays. Anyway, these black wing erasers, this um, gray one is actually my favorite. The, this uh, Palomino one, the white one, the pearl is okay. But I find that I think the Palomino one um, works, it's like darker. And I think I prefer the lighter lines that the black, this, this one is half the pressure, twice the speed. It's like the grayish silver one. I think for me, I rather use this one than the, the white, but I've used them both and they're both good, but I prefer that. And then the other things is honestly, you guys out of brushes, I would, these are the ones I would recommend any one of the Princeton. You can't go wrong. I don't think I have any of the type between the Velvet Touch, the Neptune, the Neptunes are a lot more floppy. So if you're doing like a lot of wet on wet, these work really well. If you're doing a lot of detail, I would go with the Heritage or the Velvet Touch. Um, and I would say Another favorite of mine definitely is the silver black velvet. I go to that a lot. I love Christy Rice's brushes. I've used those for flowers time and time again. Those are working great. 
I got some new brushes. I really don't want to show you yet because they will be in the haul. And then the other one I would strongly recommend is the Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes. I love. They hold their point like the Heritage ones do. As you can see, I mean, it's a little fuzzy here, but that's more because of um, human error. But you'll get to see some of my brushes that I got in the haul. So, but I don't want to disclose everything now. But thanks guys for watching. Once again, and God bless. Um, you will be seeing this video tomorrow, which will be New Year's Eve. So have a happy, happy, happy <laughs> New Year. I know I will be. And I will be looking forward to bringing in the last art haul video. And then after that, it'll be back to painting. So thank you guys for watching. God bless. Have a wonderful, happy new year, you guys. And please be safe and love one another, please. So bye-bye.